So in this video, we're going to look at a few more examples of how we would go about solving systems of equations using augmented matrices, except we're going to skip some of the details about constructing the augmented matrix and performing row operations to get to the row reduced echelon form. I have some other videos on the details of that. We want to kind of just jump to the final form and make sure we know how to interpret the final form in terms of what the solution is. So we're going to look at a few different matrices and... Uh, row reduce them, and then take a look at that final form of the augmented matrix. So let's take a look at this augmented matrix. So this, remember, this augmented matrix represents three equations with three unknowns, and the final column of this matrix represents the equals sign part of the equation. So this first row represents 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 2x3 equals 5. That's what an augmented matrix means. When we solve an augmented matrix to find the solution to the system of linear equations, we perform row reduction, right? So we do these row operations, and we get it into a reduced row echelon form. That's something that we do, and we've done that in previous videos. If we do that here, we'll end up with a matrix that I call A sub RR, meaning it's been row reduced, and it looks like this. So again, we're skipping the details here. We just want to get to this row reduced form and interpret this matrix to find the solution. So in this row reduced matrix, we look at this final equation and we have all zeros except for a number there in the final column. So 0, 0, 0, 1. Anytime you see all zeros and then a number, what this means is that you have 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 equals a number, which is the same thing as saying 0 equals 1. So this is actually what we call a contradiction. 0 is not equal to 1. That is completely false. Zero is not one. So we have encountered a contradiction, which means this system of equations does not have a solution. So anytime you see all zeros and then a number in that final column, whether the number is one or seven or pi or square root of four, it doesn't matter what the number is, we end up with the contradiction of the form zero equals a number, which is not correct. So be on the lookout for row reduced augmented matrices that have this form. All right, let's look at another example. So in this example, we'll look at a slightly different matrix. We're going to look at this matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. To solve this system of equations, again, we perform row operations to get it into a row reduced form. And in this case, the row reduced echelon form of the matrix looks like this. So you might say, oh, wow, it looks like we're going to have the same problem here, but the big difference between this example and the first one we looked at is this is zero this time. So we don't have a problem here. This is not a contradiction. This is really just saying that zero times x1 plus zero times x2 plus zero times x3 equals zero, and zero does equal zero, so that's not a contradiction. So it's not quite the same thing. So we don't have a contradiction here, but we do have a solution to this system of equations. And to find out the solution, we use some terminology that we call basic variables and free variables. So the basic variables are easy to identify. We just look for each column that has a pivot. So this column right here has a pivot in that first position. Since it's in the first position, that means that x1 is what we call a basic variable. Also, column 2 has a 1 in the second position. It has a pivot. So x2 is what we call a basic variable. The other columns do not have pivots, so there are no other basic variables. We found all of them. So anything that's left over is what we call a free variable. So the variable x3 wasn't a basic variable, so it must be a free variable. So x3 is a free variable. So what this means is we write our system of equation solution. We're going to write equations for x1 and x2. We're going to write an equation for all the basic variables. And then those equations will contain the free variables as essentially a variable. So let's go to this first row of the equation and write down what we have in terms of the matrix. What we have is x1 plus 0x2 minus x3 is equal to a negative 2. If I move the x3 to the other side of this equation, I can write x1 as a negative 2 plus x3. And I've now written x1 in terms of numbers and the free variables. So this is actually the solution for x1. Let's go to the second row. The second row says that 0x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 3. Again, I can move the x3 term to the other side, and I have x2 equals 3 minus 2x3. So again, I've been able to write the basic variable x2 in terms of numbers and free variables. 
So I now have an equation for x2. So the total solution to this system of equations are these two equations, x1 equals a negative 2 plus x3, and x2 equals 3 minus 2x3, and x3 is a free variable. So this is the solution to the system of equations. There's actually an infinite number of solutions. For any number x3 you give me, I can plug into these equations, compute x1 and compute x2, and give you a solution in the form of x1, x2, and x3. Let's do another example. So a final example here, we'll have a new matrix. Here's our new matrix A. In general, to solve this augmented matrix, I would do row reduction techniques to get it down to a reduced row echelon form. We're going to skip those details, but you can go to one of my other videos to watch how to go about doing that. If I do row reduction, I get down to this form of a matrix. And our goal now is to look at this row reduced augmented matrix and figure out what the solution is of this system of equations. So our strategy is going to be the same as the last example. Let's identify the basic variables and the free variables. The basic variables I get from the pivot columns. The first one is x1, so x1 is a basic variable. I have a pivot in this column, the second column, so x2 is a basic variable. And I also have a pivot in this column. I have all zeros with a 1 in that final column. This is the fourth column, so that means that x4 is a basic variable. This system of equations has five unknowns, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. I've figured out that x1, x2, and x4 are basic variables, so that means the leftover ones are the free variables. So the free variables in this case are x3 and x5. So now I can go ahead and write equations for each of the basic variables. From the first row of my row-reduced augmented matrix, I have that x1 plus 5x3 plus 9x5 is equal to 1. If I move the x3 and x5 terms to the other side, I can rewrite x1 in terms of numbers and free variables. So I now have an equation for x1. From the second row of my row-reduced matrix, I have the equation x2 plus 7x3 plus 4x5 is equal to a negative 9. If I move the terms x3 terms and x5 terms to the other side, I can write an equation for x2. So I've written x2 in terms of numbers and the free variables x3 and x5. And then finally from the third row, I have the equation x4 plus x5 is equal to 3, which if I move the x5 to the other side, I have an equation for x4. x4 has been written in terms of numbers and free variables. So this is my system of equation solution. I have an equation for each one of my basic variables, x1, x2, and x4, and I know that x3 and x5 are free variables. So if you tell me any value for x3 and x5, I can plug into the equation for x1 and compute x1, I can compute x2, and I can compute x4, and I have a solution to this system of equations. Since x3 and x5 are both free, there's an infinite number of ways to choose them, so I actually have an infinite number of solutions to this system of equations, but that's okay. They're all valid solutions. So that's the final example I wanted to work through. We didn't do any details of how to do row reduction in this video. We basically just started with an augmented matrix, showed the row-reduced version of it, and then learned how to identify the general solution of that row-reduced augmented matrix. In the first example, there was no solution. We encountered a contradiction. In the last two examples, we had both basic variables and free variables, and the strategy is to write an equation for each basic variable in terms of numbers and the other free variables.